the dark night in our own souls, the dark night in our families, the dark night in our country and all things around us. We're in the very pitch darkness. What do we look for in the darkness? The dark is cold. In the dark, we cannot see and appreciate the things that are about us. We cannot see them what they really are. There's no possibility of working in the dark. Nothing is accomplished in the dark. There is no hope in the dark. We want the light. But not just that which is the light. We want the light of life. We want the light that brings life. And this is the Emmanuel. It's true that there is a saying that if God be with us, who could be against us? And this saying refers to war. If God is with me, and someone tries to fight me, how can he fight against me, since God is on my side, and I am with God? But on this night, there was no contemplation of war. There were shepherds simply watching their flock in the middle of the night. They had the night shift. There was St. Joseph, and there was the Blessed Virgin Mary. And they were simply looking for a place to stay. But there was no room for them in the end. Then there was the end itself, which was filled with those who had money and were able to stay in the comfortable place. There was no war going on. Not only was there no war going on, but it says in sacred scripture that when Jesus Christ would be born, it would be a year of peace. And there was peace throughout the whole world in all the entire history of the world, this is the only year out of 6,000 years of our world that there was peace over the entire earth. There was no war going on. When do we call upon God? When we're in trouble. We call upon God when we're being attacked. Then we call upon God, Lord, take me out of this pit. Take me out of this trouble. Take me out of this bad situation. But when the Lord God landed on the beachhead of the earth, he came a warrior. Yes, he did. Today is not a day of war. He walks peacefully upon the earth. We expect there to be a great war. Just like on Palm Sunday, when our Lord Jesus Christ was going into the city of Jerusalem, what did St. Thomas say? What did he think? In the name of all the apostles, he would later be called the Doubting Thomas, said, Let us go and let us die with him. Consider those twelve apostles. As they were walking to Jerusalem on that Sunday morning called Palm Sunday, they were waiting to die. They were waiting to be arrested. They were waiting to be stoned to death. They were waiting to be captured and ripped apart by the people. They were in complete terror, for they knew that war was ahead. Because what did the prophecy say? And what did the Jews say? What did they say? They said, when this man shows up, if he comes to Jerusalem again, we're going to put him to death. And there was a tumult amongst the people before he showed up. For some said, he is a wicked man. Others said he is good. But no one was speaking of openly for fear of the Jews. A great war was coming. When that man, who had been here for the last three and a half years, when that man, Jesus Christ, would walk into Jerusalem again, they dreaded coming into that city. And remember before St. Thomas said, let us go and let us die with him, don't forget what the other apostles said. Don't go to Jerusalem. It's dangerous. Don't go. This isn't the right time. Let the anger, let the hatred die down. We can do good here in Galilee. We can do good in Samaria. We can do good in the rest of Judea. But don't go to Jerusalem. They're going to kill you. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I'm going to Jerusalem. And he went. And as he walked into that city, instead of being killed, instead of being assaulted, they laid palms before his feet. They said, Hosanna to the son of David. 
because he wanted it to be a peaceful walk into the city that day. Just like it was 33 years before. He chose to come into this earth in the midst of darkness. Now consider the king, King Herod. What is he planning when that child is born? He has learned that the child is going to be born, and he has planned his soldiers to bring about the death of that child. He already wishes the death of that child. It's a very violent time in the heart of Herod. And he spoke to the people of Jerusalem, and he spoke to the priests. And what did the sacred scripture tell us? They were disturbed. They were very disturbed. They were troubled. We understand why Herod the wicked was troubled. But the priests were troubled. They had looked up their catechisms. Where is this child supposed to be born? They didn't know, because they didn't know their faith anymore. Every child should know that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem, that he's going to be the son of David. Everyone knows that, but the priests had forgotten. And when, when Herod said, where is the child to be born? When the three kings came to speak to him, they had to look it up in their books. They didn't know the most simple truths of faith. And when the priests don't know the faith, it's a very dark night. 2,000 years later, times have not changed very much. The priests don't know where the child is to be born. They don't know that he's God. They don't know that he's with us. They don't know that there's going to be a great tribulation. They don't know there's going to be a victory of marriage. They don't know the most simple things that are taught in the sacred scripture 2,000 years ago. And then all these priests should know. They don't know. They're busy dismantling the church of Christ. It's a very dark night. But when Jesus Christ decided to be born in that cave, he wanted there to be no conflict at that moment. He chose that it be a moment of peace. And why was this? Because he wanted those shepherds to understand what all shepherds must understand. There is only one thing that matters. Whether there is war or peace, is God with us? Are we with Him? If He is with us, there doesn't have to be a conflict to save us from. There doesn't have to be an activity. All that matters is that He is with us. And it's just another ordinary day, or another ordinary night. It is the winter, it is dark, but no exceptional storm. There is a brief moment of peace throughout the world, but no one pays attention, because here and there there's always a moment of peace, but somehow at this moment there's peace everywhere. Because all that is, what God wants to show us is, there is only one thing necessary, only one. 33 years later, before he was about to die, he had to say to St. Martha, 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 you are solicitous about many things. You're so upset with St. Mary Magdalene because she's not working. You're upset with her because she's sitting at my feet. You're upset with her because she's not helping in doing the work that must be done that we might be taken care of. Martha, Martha, you are solicitous about many things, but there is only one thing that is necessary, and Mary has chosen the better part. That most wonderful Mary Magdalene. She chose the better part. And what is that? Just to be with Jesus Christ. 
just to be with him. That's all. What is heaven? All that heaven is, it's a place. But what makes it such a wonderful place? Why do we want to go to that place? Because it is the place where Jesus Christ is. It is the place where he is with his Father. It is the place where he is with the Holy Ghost. It is the place where he is with his Holy Mother. It is the place where he is with his saints. That's the place where we want to be. That's the place where I want to be and why it's called heaven. It is a place where God is with us. What is his most wonderful name? He is called Emmanuel, God with us. He is always God and he is God in every place. God is in hell, in his judgment, in his wrath. He is on the earth as the first cause. He is in the extremities of the universe, holding all things in existence. He is absolutely everywhere. And God is always God. What is it that makes me happy? What is it that makes me begin to be with the greatest joy and power in my heart? When I find that that God who is everywhere, He is with us. And He is called God with us. Because you live us in a most special way. He has decided that human beings can shut out God. We have the power to say no to God. On this particular night, there were no bad shepherds in that mouth. There are many bad shepherds. Well, these shepherds were good shepherds because they were working in the night. They did not know that it was a most sacred night. Just like the innkeeper did not know that he was turning away the mother of God. If he had known, he would never have done it. No one knew, but only God. God quietly came in the night. He came at the precise moment of his own choosing, simply to be with us. Now remember also, even the night that he died, he chose a similar moment, like unto his birth, when for three hours there was no war, there was no fear, it was just him with his disciples. There were soldiers looking for them, Judas the traitor was trying to find a way to destroy them, but he wanted, he said, Desiderio Desiderabi. Desiring, I have desired to eat this past with you. I have desired to be with you during these three hours. With a most full and perfect desire. Desiring, I have desired. And he was there with them during those three hours. He was with all of them, but most especially with he who is called the beloved disciple. It was the most wonderful three hours. What was wonderful about it? Those eleven men were with him. Now there was a twelfth one there, but he was not with him. He was ejected like a poison outside of that company. He was told, what thou must do, do quickly, go away from here. But the other apostles, had nothing to do that night. Just like Mary Magdalene had nothing to do a few nights before. And so it is in this night. We don't need to have anything to do. We just need to be with him. And it is a most wonderful night. Emmanuel. All we must do is be with him. There are troubles all around the world. There are struggles everywhere. There are many empty hearts. But there is one thing that is necessary to be with Christ. And this is called peace. St. Thomas Aquinas describes peace and defines peace as the tranquility of order. That's all it is. It's a tranquility, a rest that comes when things are in order. 
We find this peace in Lawrence, the great saint that converted to Rome. They tried to disturb his peace when they roasted him a good iron. They tried to disturb his peace when they tortured and skinned him and flayed him. They tried to disturb his peace by one of the longest and most painful martyrdoms that any martyr ever experienced. And all he did was laugh. And all he did was fill with the greatest of joy because he had God with him. Because he had the treasure of the divine love that they could not take away. He had the treasure of faith that they could not take away. He had the treasure of truth that made him free that could not be taken away. They could take away his skin, they could take away his flesh in all manner of means. They could roast him. But he was filled with such joy because he was at peace. Now, what is the cause of peace? The rest in the presence of the beloved. And that's what joy is. It's an effect that comes when we're in the presence of the beloved. Hence, we find in the saints, they have joy and they have peace. And we find in the sinners that there is no joy and there is no peace. All we must do is be with Christ in the holy truth of faith. To be with Christ in our hearts. And remember this. What is it that makes my body alive? It has millions of parts. So many millions of parts. Trillions of viruses. The coronavirus is the only virus we have. We have trillions of viruses inside of us. So many trillions of parts. But what makes me alive? Only one thing. It is a life principle called my soul. The soul that gives life to the blood and life to the heart, life to the trains of heart, makes it all one, makes it warm, makes it able to do wonderful things. Take away that soul. Now all I've got is trillions of parts. What is the soul of our world? What is the soul of our church? What is the real soul of all things that we do? It is the life of God inside of us. And God's been taken out from our families. Hence, it's the dividing parts. God's been taken outside of our, of, our, of our hearts. And hence, it's ripped apart, dead. We must simply make God the center of all things that we are and all things that we have. Yes, we have a true faith. We know that God is God. We know the devil is in hell. We must have the love of God inside of us. And that is what gives life. And that is what gives light. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, God said in the beginning, Let there be light. And fiat looks. He said, Let there be light. And light was made. And why did he say that? Because light is the first property of all being. Anything that comes from God. All of it is light. Light is the first property. Everything that God made is able to be touched by light, is able to be seen by light. Nothing is not visible. It's nothing. But light touches all things that are real. What's the cause of light? The Word of God. What is light? Comes from God. If I take away God, there can be no light. It's pretty simple. And we've taken God away from our hearts. And even if we have a true faith, what is our trouble? And why do we sometimes not have peace? And why is there worry inside of us? Because our heart is divided. That's the only reason. My heart loves God 47.9% or 53.7%. And the rest is given to the world. I'm divided. And that other part worries. The other part does not have peace. But we must make our hearts completely be unto God, to rejoice that He is with us. He is a man of God. God is with us. And the shepherds were simply taking care of the sheep that night. That's all they were doing. The angels came and said, You shall see a child. There shall be a sign to you. Why a child wrapped in swaddling clothes laid in a manger? Swaddling clothes? Wrap him like a mummy so that he cannot move his hands. 
Lay it in a manger, a place of food, in a cave with the animals. And this shall be a sign to you. And why is it a sign? Because when you see that beautiful baby, when you see that boy child, that real man, you'll see it's God who is his life. God is in him. And God is now visible in flesh. His power shall not be in his own hands. His power shall not be in his own feet. For they are wrapped in swapping clothes. He shall not eat others. He shall be eaten. So where is going to be his power? It's going to be because God is what will make him food. He shall be our food. He was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. He is going to be our food. And that food is going to transform us, not him. It's all because God is there. And you must remember in our present time, God is here. But it's also the first time note in the history of our country especially in recent times. We pray for heaven to give us a reprieve because a short time ago when President Trump gave his speech about the President, the Christmas greeting. For the first time he said, he began by saying Christians believe this and Christians believe that. But then he went on and said, not Christians believe, but we thank God the real and true God, the only God, that He sent His only Son to redeem us. And this is a reason to rejoice, because God, not those whom we say is God, not the one we Christians believe is God, we Catholics believe is God, no, He is God. And God sent His only begotten Son to redeem us. That is what we are here for, to be with God. And why does he redeem us? Why did he buy us back? What does redeem mean? He's to buy back. For what? To be bought back that we might be his possession, that we might be with him again. That's why he bought us back. We were away from him, but he wants us back. When we're away from him, we're so sorry, and so sorrowful, and so miserable, and living so much in darkness. We need to be with him. And God with us chose to be born in the night. There were animals there because he loves all his creatures. There were a few shepherds in Cain. There was St. Joseph and his holy mother. And what did these shepherds do? The first duty of the priest of God in his preaching. He simply, they simply went out and said, God is here. God is here. They went into the world and said, God is here. This may be a dark world, but there is light, and he is the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and he is here. God is here. We are called the men of God. I am supposed to be a man of God. What does that mean? That in my duty as a priest of God, to be a representative of God, to speak of God, to be filled with God, to lead all souls to God, and bring God to all souls. All the other things have no meaning. Souls, others, brain, unless God is there. God spoke and there is light. God spoke and there are rocks. God spoke and there are men. God spoke and there is time. And God speaks in his wrath and there is justice. And there is judgment, and God speaks, and there is divine love poured into souls. And God is, and because God is, there can be other things. So whoever believes in other things without God, believes in nothing. Their brains are nothing. Their hearts are nothing. They are empty and dead. And we must let the whole world know, God is that's why Moses was such a great prophet. The scripture tells us none like before him and none like after him. Was he asked the essential question. You tell me to go and tell them, the Jewish people that they're about to be saved. They shall ask, who sent you? And I must say to them, who sent me? And he said, you tell them, he who is sent you. 
Tell them I am who I am. Send you. Then Moses, who stuttered, was able to speak boldly. Then Moses, who didn't even fulfill his law, his rules, he would live a bad Jew, didn't even circumcise his own children. He was a murderer. He was a coward. But when he realized, I am who I am, sent me. He who is, sent me. His face became filled with God. His spirit became filled with God. And it is said of Moses, who was such a hot-tempered, proud young man, that when the people met him after he was filled with God, he was called Moses the meek, Moses the gentle, because he was with God. God was with him. But in any case, we are here with God. Emmanuel. Let us make sure that we are followers of God, not because he defends us from our enemies. Followers of God, not because he feeds us so well. He takes such good care of us. But we follow God because he is God. And we are with him. And he is called God with us. And that's all we need and all we want. The little child was wrapped in swaddling clothes, lay in the manger. In that child's God. He is the answer to all darkness, the answer to all troubles, the answer to all lies, and our only hope, and He is heaven. The place where we want to be is with the God who is with us. Lord, bless you all. Happy Christmas. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.